Hello, hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon. I'm Manoson, and for a second I forgot to unmute my mic. And anyway. Oh, hang on, let me listen to myself. Oh no, uh, the music needs to be slightly louder. A little bit more louder. Let's see. No, no. Just a tiny little bit less. It is annoying to balance the audio. I'm very extremely particular about the audio. Oh, wait. What is this? Lord of the Rings Lo-Fi Radio. Okay, I'm gonna keep on on this one. Whatever, okay, let's see. <clears throat> Let me start my greeting again. Hello, hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon. I'm Benasong, a Ludigen author and professional multiverse wizard. Specializing in world building and micro community. Now, floating by my. Where's supposed to be my shadow? Where's Grimmery? Oh, there you are, Grimmery. Now, floating by my shoulder is Grimory. A succubus is always open to gain more accolade. But the milking session is for after the stream because right now it's time for some more reading. And today we have a continuing. I was on that. That's pretty the right one. And today we are having more of mercantilism. Yay! Fun! Fun stuff. Why can't I zoom this properly? There we go. Twenty twenty. It's flipping. Main. Eh. It's good enough. Keep it like this. Now we are about on this area. Also, yes. Hello, Lapis. Thank you for redeeming the first. Congrats. You get a whole night with Grammar where you can do anything you want. She's pretty good with illusions. Also, hello, Pencil. Thank you for the waving. Thank you for the power up lapis. Thank you for the iron. Thank you for the cutie notes. Enjoy your cute support cuties. We were around this area where the last we stopped and I'm gonna start skipping. Like I was just reading on without thinking too much about what am I reading about. But that's not uh that is not very efficient since there's 400 pages and we're like is the show yes the show 100 pages out of 500 and almost 500 pages don't pay attention to this number well it's technically just technically where is like page 84 of actual text so not even 100 pages yet and there's been like oh what's the sprint stream number again oh shit did i update it correctly number three number three stream was the last stream number two? No. This is the fourth stream. This is not even the, the third stream. It's the fourth stream. It's okay. Number four. Forgot to update the number. I like my numbering to be correct. And precise. Yeah. I also need to update that little thing over here before I forget. Uh, who cares? Who cares about stuff? And I can't edit that again. Thank you, Twitch. Thank you, Twitch. Anyway. <clears throat> we gotta continue moving down. There, these paragraphs. Look at the look at the fucking size of these paragraphs. Can I can I find out how many words there are in these paragraphs, please? Let me open a text file over here. Yeah, yeah. 
Let's see. 300 words. 300 words. That's quite a lot. Like that, that's one tenth of a chapter that I write. One tenth of a chapter. Each chapter that I do has like 3,000 words and that's long. So 300 words, one tenth in just one singular paragraph. That's insanity. That's insanity. I think they do need to use paragraphs a little bit more to make it easier to read, but it is a, it is a history book. It is the academic history book, so can't expect too much. Now, there is a quote over here. I like reading quotes because they 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 are good examples of uh, whatever the point the author wants to make. One particular fertile source of information on France's economic condition is the memorandum submitted to the Board of Trade. 1701 by the representatives of the commercial cities. The Lions and Nantes deputies concentrated spe especially on river tone, and the remarks of the latter are worth repeating. Yeah, so if they are worth repeating, then they are worth listening to. One second. I still need to clear my throat regularly because of the the remnants effects of this flu are still there. I'm also regularly drinking just a tiny little bit of water to keep my throat wet. We all love it when it's wet, don't you? Now, the quote. Special river tolls are also one of the greatest detriments to commerce. They are so numerous that more than 30 may be counted between Rouen and Nantes, 600 kilometers. Which means as many stations at which ships must stop. Goods are so overcharged that they have been known to pay a total of 30 or 40 EQs in toll for a consignment. From Run to Nantes, instead of the legally permitted charge of 10 EQs. Poor sailors are often compelled, in addition, to make presents to the tall officials or the lad that otherwise delay them as long as they please, and by persecuting them in this manner, force the, river, force the shippers to rob the merchants in order to recoup themselves. Conditions on other rivers are not different. This is, this is insane. Planting the ladder sent by the merchants of poor. The Minister of Finance in 1714, at a time when the toll charges were double. <laughs> double! Is also very impressive, the following being an exact extract. Conditions have led to such excess by reason of the false declarations made by them, the toll farmers, in their statements of charge that they levy tolls. Levy, 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 levy. Levy. One second. Ah, oh, shit. Me too. I might not be over here before I can. Levy. 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 Okay. Easy, easy enough. Easy enough. No problem. Over here. That the levy tolls from goods legally exempt from payment and in many districts le levy three and four times the legal amount of toll from goods not so exempt. The shippers refuse to pay more than the amounts quoted in their statements of charges. The officials add convoys to their other extortions. And these ruin the shippers. Since they must, as a result, often maintain 40 or 50 men. And so they are forced to pay the charges demanded of them in order to avoid even greater losses. Many of the officials have so inspired fear because of the office which they hold that the injured parties do not dare to take action against them. The abuses have reached their high watermark through the doubling of the river toll charges. In many places, this taxation is in the hands of the Crown's creditors and has become the heaviest and most annoying that has ever been placed on trade. Proof of this lies in the rise of the cost of transport. What cost 10 livres before now cost 40, which is one of the causes of greater dearness of all food. Moreover, merchants are thereby forced to convey their goods by land, where the cost is no more than by river and the risk is absent, and the result is that the lore is almost losing its useful usefulness for commerce, although it flows through practically the whole kingdom. The, the, the situation in those places seems so fucking insane, it's incredible. Like, I, it feels 
It feels like it's uh, it's it's the birth of bureaucracy, like on that age the governments and proper bureaucracy and proper proper a proper feeling of what is actually a government and a nation starts to become something more something more more tangible. Because before before in medieval feudal times it was just a, a loose a loose group of, of villages united to a king. But even even that union was like so weak, and uh, even that sort of union was so weak and fragile. It, it it created the the common situation where the feudal lords are always rebelling against the king. They're always killing each other. They're always fighting against each other when they're not fighting against the a uh, a uh, a uh, outside enemy. Because of how oh God, because of how how weak their bonds are to each other. So on this age, it feels like they're starting to actually create a government, but they do not have the capability to properly govern things. You know, I should read about the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was massive, and even though it fell because it was too massive and difficult to govern, they still had some some way to properly govern things. Because the way the book describes the time period of mercantilism is a, is a fucking mess. So I think at least at least they did manage to have something slightly better in Roman times. And they had less technology back then. They had less technology back then. And they still managed to govern a bigger empire in a more efe efficient way than it seems to be here. And so I guess... I, oh, let me actually add this. Where can I add this? Book, game list, book streams, reading streams. Uh, let me see. Bureaucracy, is that how you put From the Roman Empire. Did it? On parentheses. How did they manage to govern such. A large empire for so long. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea for a future reading stream. Not just the Roman Empire, every other bigger empire, like. Yeah, not just the Roman Empire. Roman em bureaucracy on the Roman Empire and other, other big empires. The Chinese had big empires. The Chinese had big empires. The Mongols had big empires. And which other nation had a big empire? The Ottomans? I guess this is around the time of the Ottomans, yes. So how did uh, how did empires manage to keep themselves together? Another another idea. How did empires manage to stay together for so long? <clears throat> Technically not very long since they since they all fell apart eventually, but still, they can keep they can keep going for generations. And I wonder how, because you look at something like this and you're like, "Holy shit! How is how is commerce how is commerce even working? How are people actually even managing to sell goods when there's like so much more? Uh, three, four, five times more? They're paying five times more the, the price that they should. Lies on the rise of cost. What costs? 10 delivered before now cost 40. Four, four times more. How is how is how is how is the how is the country not collapsing under the weight of this amount of corruption? It's like they are they're just going back to the infancy. The uh, is on a time period where they're rebuilding nations, rebuilding the sense of uh, the sense of a nation, the sense of a government. So everything that could go wrong will go wrong. Like every place that could there be a corruption there could be something bad going on it will happen because every country is basically just a baby who cannot who do not have the the culture to actually create a, a stable system well britain in the in the previous chapter it said that britain had one of the better ones britain had one of the best well put together bureaucracy system and taxes and things like that but even then it was still full of uh full of uh problems and uh, revolts by the farmers and, and traders who were like no this is too much 
this is too much the best of the best in the world is still too much for for for, for merchants to live without paying also the brits gonna be upon you <laughs> well i'm that well there there's that there's that but i'm talking internally internally they had um internally the book saying that they had quite the, the best uh they had the best internal uh taxing system so that may be a contribution why they managed to be guns upon everyone they managed to bring guns upon everyone but it was still full of uh problems but it's quite uh it's quite curious how this thing work it's not it's also not something that's very talked about in, in uh this in uh in history lessons you don't really learn about these things and it makes sense when you look at it because we gotta learn how we gotta learn how to be a nation somewhere and you can't learn you want to they're basically just uh trying and stumbling forward they're just everyone's stumbling forward so if you look at the government systems of today compare to how it will be in the past try to compare try, try to think how if if if, there's, if the government systems today are a mess then imagine how they would be in the past that is a good in food for thought that is an interesting food for thought now the conclusion which must admittedly be drawn for the above description is that there is a little distinction between german and french conditions in spite of the fact that the strongest statesman of french monarchy had devoted his attention to this fear even with the best people even with the strongest statesmen as they say even with the with the biggest politician working on this they still cannot fix it it was such a widespread cultural problem that they knew even the best could fix it mm, now let's move let's start skipping that is pressing mainly local authority which was set up 724 it had the effect of suppressing many local tolls and forcing down the charges of several orders. But the change was a very limited one. Thus, when the jurist published his handbook on the rights of landowners, he had to mention that, according to his own investigations, there existed a huge number of infringements of the law on the lower course of the Rhone. It now appeared than 36 private river tolls. Kriga collected at 15 stations along the stretch of the river. Total lines. Okay, I want to know how they fixed this. I don't know how they fix this. One of the police police commissioners of Paris carried out an investigation into the amount paid by wine conveyed to Paris from Rouen in the middle of the country. He discovered that payments had to be made at 20 different places in addition to the amount paid before the wine reached Rouen. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is always repeating. Already repeating the same points, yeah. Yeah, there were many river tolls. There were many river tolls. There were 28 river tolls in this part. There were, 12, there were blah, 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 the river tolls in this part. There was a shit ton of river tolls on that one place. And they paid, da -na -na, go. And they paid X more. And they paid, da -na -na. Okay, yeah, that's that's just repeating information. No, not repeating information. Repeating, like, the, the idea. Get a book. Even one of the quotes, even one of the quotes is already, already, already have the strongest quote. The strongest confusion reigned supreme. The endeavors of the French monarchy to end the disorder were almost as old as the, as the monarchy itself. Yeah, I get it. I get it, book. Let's move on. The total number of river tolls in all France was, of course, unknown, but was estimated by one author in the year of the revolution at 16. Okay, but what, what? It was estimated, but where's the? Oh God damn it! It was estimated, but where's the number? Where's the number? You said it was estimated, but you don't give me the estimation. How oh, useless! Mm -hmm. His Majesty desires, with all his heart, to free the nation from these innumerable tolls, both by land on the navigable rivers. Royal Majesty is aware that. They are hindrance to trade and cause its decay. Since they are not regulated by uniform tariffs, their complexity and multiplicity demand careful study on the parts of merchants and shippers. Endless difficulties arise from them and numerous petty vexations, which even the strictest administration can neither superintend nor punish. 
Yeah, they just winning against the. They're just winning against the the, the government by number, because of number in the. In. In the com complexity, because it kind of makes sense. How do you how do you practically make an authority where people are like, yeah, this is a this is a legal tool, this is an illegal tool. How are people gonna know about it? Especially if they complain it, they're gonna if if, if they complain it, they're gonna be screwed over because the guys that uh, manage the tolls also have more power. So it is a it is a power of, it is a problem of legitimacy how do you without technology how do you mark how do you make sure that the average person know what is official and what is a scam and even when the officials are uh, are being corrupt how do you make a system where the person can uh, can uh, can uh, anonymously anonymously give a what do you call it a complaint give an anonymous complaint that there is something wrong going on, and that there, and that that's something you'll be doing because even if you make a, even if you make a, a policing body, a internal affairs as they call, as some places call it, an internal affairs that investigates, investigates abuses of power. Even the internal affairs itself can be corrupted. Like you make an internal affairs, but now it's corrupt. So you make an internal affairs of internal affairs, but now it's corrupt. So you make an internal affairs of internal affairs of internal affairs, but now it's corrupt. It's a, it, it is, it, there's, there's. It feels like it's an impossible task. Corruption, poggies, yeah, corruption. How do you fucking deal with it? This is another thing that I want to know about. How do you deal with po corruption? How did historically we deal with corruption? I guess you could execute enough people. <laughs> I guess if you keep executing people, there won't be enough. There won't be enough corruption. There won't be enough people. There won't be enough people to be corrupt. But it has to be come from the top, that's the problem. You need to have the people at the top investigating. And being uh I guess that's I guess that's the problem I guess it's just a problem with the uh, monarchy in general. The dude at the top needs to be, be uh, benevolent. The dude at the top needs to be benevolent. If your if your king is lazy, doesn't care about it, then nothing's gonna be done about it. Nothing's gonna be done about it. Because every every step of the way, from the king down to the most common person, they're just gonna keep increasing the number of uh, corruption. They're just gonna yeah, they're just gonna keep uh, just keep being corrupted because there's no no real consequences on anything. Somewhere along the step, someone needs to make a break and say no, this is too much. This is too much corruption, but. It's easier to be corrupt and stay corrupt than uh, be honest. Because the if you're an honest person, the people are gonna know you're an honest person, and the corrupt people are gonna be are gonna want to remove you from power because you're a problem. You're a thorn on their side. While you, a honest person, will have a lot more trouble dealing with the corrupt person unless you become corrupt yourself, and then there's like Okay, now now I'm corrupt too. I'm corrupt to remove the corrupt person. <laughs> when does it stop? When does it stop? When does it end? When does my when does my soul? Where's the limit? Is my soul now evil now? Is my soul is my soul now part of them now? My soul is my soul tainted now? Or is or is or or is it is it fair for me to to actually be like this? Then it becomes a philosophical. Then it becomes a philosophical statement, <laughs> and it's a fucking mess. There is always a problem. You think you you think you can solve it, but there's always something further on that becomes a problem. There's always something further on that becomes a problem. There's no escaping. Yeah. Let's just move on. Mm-hmm. Regulation mentions even at this late date that the river tolls drive commerce on the land. The commerce onto the land out. In other words, it is the identical complaint which drags through all the regulations of the French monarchy during 500 years. 500 years they have been complaining about this and they could not fix it. 
come of this regulation 2 was nothing more than a new inquiry. <laughs> the outcome of this regulation 2 was nothing more than a new inquiry. Whether the hundred or more, we cannot say. But it had not ended by the outbreak of the revolution. It goes on. It goes almost without saying that the same complaints against river and road tolls, tolls were to be found in the Hills de Doliences, in which the French nation gave vent to its feeling and wishes as soon as the assembly of the state was summoned. Mm -hmm. No fundamental change had taken place since the French people had last voiced its pleas to the previous assembly of the state in the year 1614, that is, since 175 years. They've been dealing with this for hundreds of years and they cannot fix it. It is, well, it is at its core a problem with corruption, so... If you fix this problem, you fix everything. If you fix corruption, you fix everything, so... Uh, it is quite expected. The main discussion at all has been landed on river and road transportation, but there are also... The union's host of other changes or goods levied partly at markets. Uh, the public places and partly it is the most important division goes into cities the city towns were in general an important factor into the disintegration of towns and in this fear the revolution found the medieval system still prevailing without essential modification the city towns were in general an important factor in the disintegration of towns in this sphere okay it is an interesting little quote i'm just gonna copy it because because it, it, it sounds interesting because you can see that in uh, that the tolls are just illegally put anywhere the tolls are illegally put anywhere and they are like for any reason so having a specific place that people know where to expect like river city tolls people are expecting a city tolls but if you just toll them at random and anywhere then they're like wait why why and they become more aware and the more the more aware they are that they're being scammed the more pressure they put into the scammers so having some easily identified place like the city to be the the center place for where tolls happen would make for a more a lot more uh make for a lot more stable system a more easily at I'm kind of losing my words. I'm kind of I'm searching for the correct word, but it's kind of hard sometimes. A centralized tool will make for more identifiable, make it more identifiable, and make the corruption more easy to spot. Well, I guess that's it that I had to say. Uh, oh, the story history of French river and road tolls does differ from that of the other continental countries only in the one particular. The fact that in France, the state undertook, in theory, to abolish them, although the practical result was trifling. Hmm? Okay, the only difference is that France wanted to abolish the tolls. Even though the practical result was trifling, then uh, useless, not effective. Zero usefulness whatever but as regards public towns the patient towns levy on goods with the defined destination france occupies a special position it was just as the sheep left on obscurity and chaos huh the definition as distinct from purely transit towns france occupies a special position that to obscurity and chaos which has not needed all previous similar confusion playing a great deal hmm but they're also frequently illegal. Not frequently, most likely illegal. St. Thomas, on the contrary, this fact was not at all clear and was subject to changes. She added to all some sort of official footing. To ensure that all some sort of official footing, some part of the trade had to be exempted from them. On the other hand, uniformity was so obviously absent that the obligation to pay was by no means the lead limited to goods of foreign trade. On one hand, the state was not entirely powerless. On the other hand, it was quite incapable of seriously enforcing a uniform system with the whole country. And as a result, there arose most striking confusion. Hmm, this is an interesting quote. These, uh, these quotes that give a summary of things, they are always useful.
And the main features of the solar system. So the description will give no more than an impression of complete chaos. <laughs> you already, yeah, you've already. Okay, this one is funny. Just, uh, just, just, just because it's uh, another one of these. You have already said this repeatedly before. Everything's chaos, 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 chaos. Okay, okay, but okay. Okay, okay, but okay. In fact, I'm indicating how this nature is impossible before monographs have been published, which are present lack like particular aspects of the subject. The inability to master the whole situation, however, is not confined to the generations of today. <sighs> to find a way about their intricate network. Yeah, imagine imagine being a peasant you know, and then being able to navigate this chaotic system of uh, of dolls. And if you don't pay, you just cannot go. If you don't pay, you are arrested. If you don't pay, you're, you're getting beat up and your goods stolen anyway. And there's no and there's no Twitter where you can go and go like yeah I'm being I, I have a video I can show you I've been uh, I've been I'm being extorted over here you can't do any of that so you just bend over and take it when we make a close study of these dolls we are really shocked to discover how numerous and what widespread they are. Even the legislation on this subject is so confused that there are scarcely one or two persons in each generation who possess a thorough knowledge of it. <laughs> There's so much regulation that not even not even the people who are supposed to know about it know it in full. Not only the contemporary descriptions there, are, but also the actual text of the statute. The statutes, the statutes are so contradictory that even vital points in the system remain obscure. Fuck. Not even the laws themselves are ma make sense. The age old tendency of French legislation to formulate its preambles in a propagandist vein often purposely draws a veil across a great deal of the true content of the statute. How do you actually pronounce this shit? Wait, there we go. Oh, wait. Oh. Statutes. 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 Practice will follow the strict letter of the law. Huh. Eventually, it's probably missed its preambles in a propagandist vein of. Okay, I don't exactly understand what he's talking over here, but whatever. For these reasons, all that can be attempted here is a general portrait of the system, or rather, the absence of system. Not a handbook on dolls, post fest the merchants. The ancient regime. Mm. How far French mercantilists succeed in the unifying the state doll system? It may be called frontier duties, insofar as they apply to goods crossing between various kinds of boundaries. Even though the payments may not have been levied actually at the boundaries, these dolls are customs which are the root of what I have named the state system. It's the line that I share the fit of these dolls. Export duties. Huh. French system of frontier dolls or duties developed. Obviously, out of the charges which are made for exemptions from the prohibitions to export. Summary today the oldest French frontier duty by an export prohibition of the year. Eh, not interesting, not interesting, not interesting. Any phone quotes? Any fun quotes? No. What was uh, what was the points that I made? Okay. I think you should read about next three in France for a couple of chapters. For a couple of chapters, then skip to the comparison with Germany. Okay. I think I'm just gonna keep scrolling for a little bit. Until I get you the until I get you the oh import duties. In you know, the 16th century, the toll system of the kingdom was extended still further by the introduction of import tolls or duties. Later development and the export tolls, originating the protectionism conception. Oh, so instead of yeah, you think about 
in the way that that uh, taxes and duties and tolls were implemented they were first uh, doing they're first forcing their internal merchants to pay to export they had to pay to take goods out of the country and not only later that they added that they had to pay to import into the country that is Quite, you you look you, you look at this and feels quite devious because you're 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 forcing your own people to pay before you're forcing the 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 tourists the 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 visitors to pay. Like it's a, it is it is all about draining money of people. It is all about draining money of people. So the most obvious way it comes for is draining money from the peasants themselves. How despicable. Mm. But I'm kind of kind of wanting to read about about this now. Ports for duty, level on green. This is apparently specific. <laughs> a further complication now arose through the inclusion of a fourth, more or less general expert duty. So <laughs> they could not stop themselves from from taxing the the the, the peasants once. They had to tax the peasant four times. They had to tax the peasants four times just to trade internally. Just made valid, blah 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 blah. Buy anywhere. Practice the new duties do not receive their full prescribed currency. And this was a cause of even more widespread disruption. Of course. This was farmed out. Hmm? Crown believed that he could collect a large income by farming out a new duty more easily than by raising the rates of one already existing. Oh shit! So instead of fixing the duties, instead of fixing the, the taxes that are already there, they're just adding more and more taxes. Just because it was easier to get more money this way. And instead of fixing... <laughs> oh, even the crown was fucking things up, because of course. Because of course the royals will be another source of fucking things up. Buying from themselves freedom from one another of the duties by paying lump sum or regular periodic amount to the crown. Oh, so, they, so even the towns could uh, get exemptions, which it made it even more confusing. Okay. Mm, so they, so only temporarily. At one point, they were exempt from the taxes, and then they. And then after some time, if they didn't pay up, they'll be forced to pay taxes again. So you can't even know if things are gonna be... If you're, if you're a merchant, you, you don't even know if things are gonna be steady for long. If that, price, if that amount of taxes is gonna be steady for long, it can increase at any time. And even midway of their trip. But apart from the way in which do these workings isolate in the essence, it was natural that their multiplicity must have had a thoroughly different effect from that produced by raising the same amount of money through a single rate. Okay. Few administrative features of the ancient regime have been so unanimously criticized as this. And I understand why. <laughs> in the statute concerning the tariff, vigorously support the complaints when it stated. We are convinced of the justice of the complaints, which we have frequently received from our subjects and from strangers. Because it's almost impossible that so large a number of impositions do not lead to confu confusion, and that merchants should know them sufficiently well to find their way through the disorder. Let alone their employees, agents and shippers were always compelled to rely on the good faith of the officials, which is often very suspect. <laughs> they have yet. If you're if you're just a, a mook, if you're just a sailor, and you're you're being told you have to pay taxes by someone that looks like official, you're like, okay, I'm gonna pay it. But even though you're sus as fuck, when, why, what can I do? I have to pay it. There were in fact an incalculable number of these special import duties. Some of them universal and interimplication. The greater number confined to particular province or even particular trade routes and ports within a province. It is impossible to estimate their sum total. 
or they can be given is a number of them okay i don't like to make a lot of uh modern modern uh modern uh, comparisons but you know those guys that say like taxation is theft you know these guys who say that taxation is theft imagine if they lived in a place in a in an area like this imagine if they were sent to an area like this where even the people where where we were actually literally being stolen by corrupt officials and nobody nobody not even the lawmakers themselves know how much is actually legal because the law is confusing because the law itself is that confusing imagine how they'll be like if they are forced to live in a place like this in, in, to live in this time that'd be quite funny i am saying that'd be quite funny On drugs and spices was much older than the general import duty itself since it was introduced in 1939 it was not included in the general duty. Okay, now I'm just giving examples. Finally, in addition to those mentioned and not mentioned, some of which were levied both on import and export. There is a specific charge with no less with a no less specific name of Parisis 12 and 16 years, the complication of which are characteristics. Even amount shifted. Parisis to five souls per liver. 15% of the total amount of duties. Oh, a duty that's 15, 25% of the total amount of duties. Yeah, a tax that means you pay 25% of the total amount of, of taxes. So <laughs> how how many taxes does this apply to becomes a uh, bar, becomes a a while is like a, it's like buffs on a on a on a, on a what do you call it on on those roguelites yeah you gain 25 percent more damage but is it before or after you add all of the other buffs you have because that share that that vibe of that creates a, a wildly different results depending on how it's applied oh my god the description local disintegration the description given so far is incomplete in two respects the first and less important point is the fact that the duties which disappear before COVID's reform are left out of account hmm. okay disintegration is the natural for the local disintegration is the natural focus for all work of unification and so requires your investigation although here too there is no possibility of showing more than a bare fraction of the complex identities okay Local disintegration mean uh, mean the mean mean uh, the unity of uh, of the nation being uh, disrupted even further. Okay, and this time, oh hello, no no cat, Grimmery, crush me between your booba, of course. But that's for after the stream. Right now she's here. Right now she's here to be petted and stimulated and gazed upon. You get your crush. After the stream, if you are a good boy, and if you spend enough life first. Nod, nod. <laughs> Hello, nom nom cat. Good boy as always. Yes. After the stream is where the where's the acolytes get their get their milking. So you can you can ask for a little bit of pampering there. Hello, mana. Hello. How you doing? Today we're being nerdy over here, reading about medieval systems. Today we're being nerdy. And it's painful. It is painful to be nerdy. I'm doing this for my book, for my book skills, for my world building skills. I want to learn, learn how exactly the the medieval economies worked. Well, more more importantly, the economy after the feudalism. And uh, and in a nutshell, it doesn't. The economies after feudalism did not work. Retro game win, retro stream win. Let's see. No, tomorrow is AI art. Thursday is the um, Thursday. No, Saturday is TTRPG. Sunday is gonna be. Unfortunately, Sunday was gonna be a retro game with lapis, but unfortunately, she has um, she had uh, she she had a change of plans. So I'm gonna be playing uh, against the story, which is not retro. So we'll get retro game next week. Next week only. It's gonna be. It's gonna be more Klonoa next Tuesday. More Klonoa next Tuesday. Wait, uh, one thing. Wednesday. Dragon 
Age Origins. Dragon Age Origins is 29, 2009. Is this retro yet? Is Dragon Age Origins retro yet? I don't exactly remember where's the cutoff for retro. Because Wednesday is gonna be Dragon Age Origins, so it is borderline retro. Wednesday, my dude. I do not wish it was Wednesday. Wait, how does that one go? Uh, uh, it's Wednesday, my dude. Okay, yeah. Enough of that meme. <laughs> that meme was. So, yeah. Tuesday and Wednesday. I likely next retro stream. And then. I'm not sure how it's gonna be next week. If I'm gonna have the Worker of Three collabs. I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm uh, organizing again the next Worker of Three Custom Games collab. And we're not. I'm not sure if it's gonna be next week or the, the week after. And wait. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, Nomeon Cat. I also can't wait. I wanna play more games. I wanna play more games. Why did I torture myself by reading books? It's all for the it's all for the noble goal of improving my writing, improving my word building, but still, why must I be torturing myself like this? Why must I why must I wish why must I wish to improve myself? Can I just not accept being mediocre? Stagnating? Why can't I why can't I uh, why can't I accept stagnation and just continue as always? Why must I torture? It is noble, but it is not without it. Uh, no pain, no gain. Can't wait to be crushed by Grammy. Don't we all, Nom Nom Cat? Don't we all? I wish I could be crushed. No, more likely I wish to be crushed by Lapis. Eyes. But yes. Grammar is also good enough. Grammar is also good enough. We need, uh, we need an AI bot revolution. When when we'll be able to have? If you vote for me as a as a president of the world, I will make um I will make AI bots real. I will make well bot gonna crash me. <laughs> uh, is she? Is she? Will will she? I know Grammarly will. I know Grammarly will. Yes, if you vote for me as president of the world, I'm gonna make AI bots real. For everyone, you all have your AI bot wife. You all have your AI bot wife. I'll bring a revolution to love in relationships. Nobody's gonna be lonely anymore. Real? Of course it's real. Absolutely real. As real as the presence of the world exists. As real as that. <laughs> One day, my friend, one day. Dream on. Dream on. Dream on. Because that's basically the only thing we can do. Dream. Yeah, no, AI is going on a... AI is going to crazy. AI is going crazy. AI is going crazy on development. It's not stopping anytime soon. It's not stopping anytime soon. So right now it's very awkward and clunky to use, but uh, with time, it's not it's not not even even if it stopped in developing, even if it stopped like progressing and being stronger and more powerful, it's still it's still gonna have a lot more uh, a lot more to become uh, more. There's gonna be a lot more work to make it more uh, convenient to use on the day to day. Too much to take in, but what are the trade-offs? Well, I need to become president of the world. <laughs> That's the trade-off. We might have to do a, a little bit of a revolution and war to conquer the world and unify it. So, yeah. But I think that's a I think that's a worthy prize, don't you say? I just conquer the world for that. So that the AI, so that our dreams of AI bots can be can happen. Let's just conquer the world for that. Yes, that's what I was saying. AI still has a lot of uh, usability, you know, convenience. Yeah, it will become a lot more convenient to use AI. Right now, it's very clunky and weird, and and you go through a lot of hoops. But even if it stops developing power, 
it will continue to be become more de developing in, in inconvenience. It's like uh, it's like how the internet used to be so difficult to get into. You need to be basically a, a you need to be basically a a nerd, an IT nerd, to be able to connect to the internet. And now even a even a baby can just open up, tap a few things on the phone, and uh, and uh, enter the internet. I mean, I would a 3D person than AI. AI says, I like to have a 3D person. Well, an AI is uh, is malleable. You can you can mold an AI to turn into anything you want. You can mold an AI to turn into anything you want. It's easier to get an AI that will support you emotionally than uh, than a lover in real life that would. Honestly, quite a lot of people don't know how to be how to be a proper lover. I would say most people don't know how to be a lover. Because it's not something that's even taught in schools. It's not something that's taught in schools. And each person needs their own specific type of love. So finding the perfect person for you is the is the is winning the lottery. It's literally just winning the lottery. And if you don't even if you win the lottery, it might not exactly be the perfect lottery for you. It's pretty. It's a pretty. It's a pretty difficult thing. Well, AI, AI, AI. You can mold it. Yeah, you can mold it, shape it, change it, and turn it into the perfect legal helper for you. The world is in need. People of the world are in need of. The people of the world are in need of a comfort. The people of this the world are in need of comfort of modern times. The people of modern times are in need of comfort and support, and AI can be the tool for that. Of course, it's gonna be. There's gonna be quite a lot of uh, unhealthy ways to use it, but it'll, it'll end up being a net positive for humanity because we will find a way to make it like that. We will find a way to make it like that. The AIs can be sus sometimes. Yeah, just don't make, just don't, just don't connect it to the internet and let it lose. You know, just don't give it, just don't give it the power to be to go lose and uh <laughs> just don't go just don't give me the power to run lose and you won't accidentally create skynet now time to actually return to reading time to actually return to being a nerd enough tangents for now even though I wish I could, <laughs> it's the grind for knowledge is never ending. It is not easy, but it's never ending. Yeah. The basis, the whole system was the inability to institute uniform conditions in those territories, which stood outside the royal domains from the beginning, or were not generally closely connected with them. In the majority of cases, the failure of such attempts towards coordination as were made was not due to the fact. Oh, this one is important. Were made was not due to the fact that the duties were there before the king obtained their direct jurisdiction over the principes provinces, although in many cases this was undoubtedly a contributory cause. The latter import duty as well as the export duties were from the outset also applied to only a portion of the territory which was under the king's control at the time of their inauguration. Generally a common feature of almost every administrative measure during the ancient regime. So it manifested itself more prominently in the sphere of tolls and duties than anywhere else. But in any case, the confused nature of the system was closely connected with a general administrative disorder. Yeah, it was just problem with administration. It is usually considered that the cause of the differences between the tolls of the north of France and those of the south follow from the refusal of the southern provinces to apply such duties as were introduced after 1360. How true does this does not matter here, but the fact that the, the provinces acted independently is fundamental. What's the book about? Mercantilism. After feudalism, after feudalism, the, the the nations were starting to become more unified. A proper a proper identity of a nation, a proper identity, started to be to develop because of uh, because of developments in uh, in, uh, in technology and infrastructure that allow people to be more connected, that allows different regions to connect with each other. And also because the kings were tired of the of the feudal lords rebelling all the time. The feudal lords were just like 
Yeah, I promise. Um, I promise. Uh, I promise. Uh, I promise. Uh, I promise. I'll defend you. I promise. I'm loyal to you. I totally promise that. And then shit happens, and they were like, "Oh no, not anymore." Nope. I. I am. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Not doing that. I'm not. I'm not being loyal to you anymore. Bye. So the kings were tired of that. It is. It is pretty tropey. It's pretty. It's pretty common in history to see something like this. So the kings, so the kings of the time learned matter, and they reduced the power of the feudal lords, and they started to actually take proper control of the whole country themselves. The problem is, that is a huge task. That is a huge administrative task, and the and the governments of the time were not capable of uh, managing all of that without extreme levels of corruption. That is the that is the crux of the matter over here. It wasn't. It was basically the the concept of nations was on its birth, but on it was on the infancy. There were a lot of these baby nations trying to try to try to work things out together. They were trying to create laws and systems and standardize things, but it was a fucking nightmare because on every level that you could imagine there was corruption. Yeah, and if you fix corruption. Corruption is basically a problem that's impossible to fix, even in modern times. If you fix corruption, you fix a nation forever and you reach an utopia. But because the the, the idea of a, of a government was just a baby thing at the time, they were pretty bad at being governments. They were pretty bad at being governments. That's, that's the essence of this book. Confusion reigned supreme. It was Harf. If the governments of today, imagine, if the governments of today are bad with corruption, imagine how the governments of the time were. They were even worse, to the point where it's, in, it's, in, it's incredible how they did not actually collapse. They did eventually collapse. Some of, these, some of these governments did eventually collapse, but it's a wonder that some of them did not collapse sooner. There's a quote saying that they have been having troubles with the exact same troubles with corruption. The exact same type of corruption for 500 years. They've been complaining, the, the population has been complaining for 500 years. And they still could not fix that same problem across the whole country. I eat corruption for breakfast. Uh, I hope uh, I hope that's something healthy. I hope that's something healthy. Because there's basically infinite corruption, Namun Cat. There's basically infinite corruption. So I hope you're not doing this of the good of the people. Otherwise, you're gonna... You might eventually die really soon. And that'll be quite sad. So don't die, Nom Nom. Don't die. Stay healthy, friend. Stay healthy. Eat a healthy amount of corruption, okay? Also, it's time for ad break, and I being it's been an ad break already for one minute and a half, so I need to go drink oh, I forgot to drink coffee today. Shit. Yeah, I'm gonna go drink some coffee, grab a little snacks, might be take a little bit more longer than three minutes. See you guys soon. We are back. Pleasure and indulgence smash the boundaries of restraint and immerse ourselves in the ecstasy of the moment. Nice. Oh yeah, I changed Grammarly a little bit. She's a lot more direct and explicit, so have fun with her. But she's muted now. <laughs> she's muted now. Wait until I come back before redeeming her again.
Okay, I'm finally back. Jesus. Oh, I feel like my appetite is finally coming back. The last, I don't know, three, four days, I've been eating so little. It's quite, it was kind of concerning. I was also feeling slightly uh, sick, like uh, maybe from drinking too much water, but I just could not eat. And I was getting some slight uh, pains where my intestines would be some discomfort or something like that. So I think I kind of ate too much trash or something. I think I ate too much trash. But now it feels like it's finally clearing. And oh shit. Now I feel like it's finally clearing and I'm starting to eat. Starting to feel like eating again. That was so weird. That uh, that um, that flu that I got, I guess it was a flu. It could have not sure if it could have been uh, COVID, honestly. It was way too weak for COVID and did not have the usual symptoms of COVID. So I think it was just a flu, but it kind of messed me up for quite some time. That was annoying. And now it feels good to actually be hungry and feel like eating something again. Like, damn, I hate, I hate the idea of uh, stuffing myself with food, like eating more than I want. It was something my parents kind of forced me, kind of had to do to me because I was a, uh, I was a picky eater as a child, and now I'm a foodie, which is ironic. But I was a picky eater, so they had to force me to eat quite a lot of stuff, and I absolutely hated, despised that. So forcing myself to eat things is uh, is uh, really stressful, and I was starting to worry if I had. And I was forcing myself a little to eat like baggies or something, just so that I do not die of. I don't know, lack of nutrition. I was just worried if I if I was actually gonna make it sick by not eating. So I was forcing myself to eat a little, and that was annoying, difficult experience eating. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not normally like this. I am a foodie. I fucking love eating to the point that I have to be careful not to get fat. I have to be careful not to get fat. I'm not fat. I'm not fat. I don't even have. Like a, those beer bellies that a, someone of my age would have. I am pretty flat, all things considered. I'm not, uh, I'm not super, not the flattest. To say that, I have, a, I have a, a, a very little cushion over here, but nowhere near beer belly. And uh, and uh, a certain someone said I'm not ugly. A certain someone said that I'm actually, that's actually cute. So. A certain someone called this, this belly cute, so I'm pretty happy with my way. Though I wish I could be a bit flatter, though. Even though, even though having a little cushion is nice, I would, uh, I would be more comfortable with myself if I was flatter. Because I, um, that's basically what would uh, everyone would be, right? Everyone would be more comfortable if there was some Greek sculpted god or goddess. That's just par for the course. But I'm pretty comfortable with myself. And I do love eating. I want to go back to enjoy eating. Like, I still have chocolate from uh, from Easter. I am a chocolate addict. I am a chocolate addict. Chocoholic or whatever you call it. Oh, this is the wrong window. This is the wrong screen. I am a chocolate addict. And I still have chocolate from Easter. That's unheard of. My chocolate only lasts one. At most two days, depending on how much it is. And it's been like, what, four days? This Easter and I still have chocolate. I have not enjoyed my chocolate. It's, I'm, it, it, it's driving me insane. There's something wrong with me. That's that's <laughs> that's the most worrying part. I'm not enjoying my chocolate. There's something deeply wrong with me where I'm not eating my chocolate. And I need to fix it. And it feels good to feel like I'm going back to normal. But anyway, enough enough distractions. We need to continue this. <laughs> Clear my throat. Let's see, where was the thing we did? Not front. And those of the south followed from the refusal of the Salter provinces to apply such duty. Oh, true. Disease does not matter here, but the fact that the provinces act in independently is fundamental. Yeah. It shows a lack of control from the king. And the king wants to implement a standardized system of taxing and the provinces were like, yeah, no, no, no. For hundreds of years, they just go like, nope. And to fucking fix that, to fucking learn what's going on and to fucking fix that, 
is a massive undertaking because it's a it's a it's a lens it's an even less uh how do you call it in medieval times it was the system was the governments were even less solid we're a lot less solid they're just some uh some obscure obscure authority that you didn't even know who he looked like the king was just some 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 obscure far away authority and then suddenly comes some guy saying that he belongs that he works for the king you're like eh, eh. so you just like pretend just lie and say that uh that you are doing everything and you cook up some uh, some some books that shows that you're doing everything in the law says because even he doesn't understand that's that's the that's the thing that gets me even the lawmakers do not fully understand the law so how do you manage something like that that's it that's the insane part yeah so it's kind of understandable that they were doing uh that the provinces were acting independently it's pretty it's pretty understandable they were acting like this Ancient form the basis of the French administrative system, north of a line drawn roughly equidistant between the present day north and south boundaries of France. They grew up a comparatively united uniform administrative territory. It would not include all the provinces of Brittany, or of course the latter acquisitions, the later acquisitions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just saying who these provinces you know, among this province there are certainly not many perhaps not even two where administration was exactly alike most of them show a similar administrative administrative tendencies at every point as in the matter of taxation they had this in common that they all levied aids and officially their collective name for a long time was province in which your aids are current of course their taxes were later farmed down in five parallel sections each however being common to all, and this piece of farming out was the greatest of its kind. Giving rise to the name by which the region was later known in both official and ordinary usage. Less Lingros fame. Okay. I'm sorry, but also not sorry for butchering these English wor these these French words. I did six months of French like over five seven years ago. <laughs> So yeah, of course I'm an expert in, in, in French pronunciation. But the almost see A's are good of the whole century before the revolution. <laughs> An important difference between approximately this area and the remainder of the king was that the north of France possessed no provincial states, and so its province were, were called based the election. In contrast with the rest, which are generous, plays the etat. Okay. Uh, not interesting, not interesting. Hmm, I'm kind of just glossing over to see if there's anything that's interesting information. Nope. Hmm. Hello, Abracadabra Alakazan! And a spell has been cast and we're all gonna die. Oh no! Hi hi! Hi hi to you too! Abracadabra Alakazan! How you doing? Today is Nerd Day. Have you come here to fall asleep? I know, I wish I could fall asleep to my own voice. While still studying. Anyway, the detailed survey devoted to Anju in the Edict of the 1664 Tariff begins as follows. Ooh. Oh shit, time to clear my tariff. I'm good, how are you? I'm also good, mostly. Recovering. Still have a few remnants of the flu that I went through. Still annoyed that I had to go through this flu. Still have a little, uh, a few little oddities going on, but I'm mostly, I'm like 99% good. Well, yeah, kind of around 90%, 99%. It's kind of difficult to gauge a, per a precise number, because why would it, why would I go to the effort of gauging something like that? Anyway, in today's, uh, this is a work stream. I consider it as a work stream, not exactly a, a, a leisure stream, because it's related to my writing. I'm trying to learn how to be better at world building here. So it is, it is a bit more, it is a bit more, more draining these sort of streams. 
but I, if I, if I hated, <laughs> no, I can't say if, if I really, really hated this, I would uh, not doing this. I hate him just a tiny little bit, just a tiny little bit. I hate doing this, this trips, <laughs> just a tiny little bit. Because I'm, in, even though I want to get better, at the at the end of the day, I'm mostly a lazy person. <laughs> at the end of the day, I'm quite lazy. Oh, well, at least compare to other people that I know. But it's not really good to keep comparing yourself to others. But still, my own self image that I'm kind of lazy. But you know, you know, I'm good. You know, be even better once I'm done with this. There's this big quote, and the big quotes are interesting to read, so let's read it. The confusion in these stores is even greater in our province and you. Oh yeah, we're reading about the mercantilism. And the mercantilism is basically economic system after feudalism. And in a nutshell, it's an economic system where money is king. So the king tries the king tries, the king tries to milk as much money from everywhere as he could which means that he everything is fucking taxed everything is fucking taxed to the limit and corruption starts to spread because of course even everyone wants a little bit of money so even though now everything is already taxed and now the corrupt people add even more taxes to the taxes it's taxes on taxes on top of taxes so it is a bit of an insane system of, with an insane level of corruption over here. And we are reading a quote about this insanity in a certain province called Anjou. We have ascertained that the farming of taxes there consists partly of the same tolls as those of other regions and partly of a large number of other more irregular tolls, the distinctions between which it is troublesome to regard, making it difficult to carry on trade either within or outside the province, except with great trouble and the danger of being taken by surprise by the multiplicity of the tolls and the manner in which they are levied. The export tolls are still levied there under the names of trades and impositions from foreign on all foods and goods, and the trade de manuel on only old rags, paper, tarot cards, and baking plums. All the import tolls are left on all named foods and goods. There's also the three pays the lore, and on and on and on and on and so on. <laughs> in fact, don't you occupy a peculiar position in most matters. Neither hot passes nor revert applied there, and instead of the imposing foreign and trade dominator, there were special tolls differing more or less from this is more customary ones, God. Every step of the way, there's insanity. And they should finally charge you. Bah, 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 bah. These come uh, just same time. A large portion of the general tolls introduced later were also current in June. Pay my truck. Yeah, fuck on you. Fuck on you. I guess that. Uh, guess that. I guess that province was fucked by the tolls. Left, right, and front, and back, and up, and down, and sideways. And diagonally. And upside down. <laughs> There's not a lot of interesting information right here, so I'm just gonna keep moving through. Hmm? Can our statement must be modified to the fact that the tone had already at one time almost lost the important one was renewed. Extended to majority of good. Its white currency is a banking proof not only of the powerless of the French monarchy to clear away medieval hindrances to unity within the kingdom, but also the fact that it could not even refrain from reimposing and extending them. <laughs> yeah, not only were they, were they, the French monarchy was trying to fix things up, but not only were they unable to fix that, but they were also part of the problem itself, because instead of actually doing the best choice to fix the system they 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 reimposed they reimposed stupid taxes just because they wanted a little bit more money at the time they're like we need to fix this we need to fix this yeah let, let, let's put a lot of work into fixing this well at the same time uh now that things are getting slightly fixed let's break it up again just so we can get more money 
<laughs> Let's fix this so we can get more money for ourselves. So we can break it to get, to get more money for ourselves. That's that's the that's mercantilism in a nutshell. That's mercantilism in a nutshell. Or the era of mercantilism in a nutshell. Mercantilism is not exactly an economic system. It's just basically an era of history that could be called mercantilism. That's distinct from a uh, from a uh, <coughs> from medieval from medieval feudalism in the modern the more modern times that come after. Mm -hmm. Freedom of trade is so restricted among our own subjects of the same province that, in a, that they cannot supply one another with fruit and food or with the products which they themselves produce or trade with their neighbors without paying uh, the aforesaid tolls nor can they convey goods from one place to another without making as many tolls payments as there are stations in round Yeah, this is, uh, this is another important one You can see the, the effect the horrible effect that so many taxes have on the on the on the economy oh, let me lower this wait there was a little bit more oh no yeah there we go Oh man, I'm coughing a lot right now. What the hell? My throat being itching. My throat be itching. It does get a conception of the town system within the single sphere. Ba 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 ba. Hmm. <clears throat> One thing is certainly clear, all goods in the same gross firms had to pay to all there when trading with the rest of France. Even if they paid again at the other end, that is, in the other provinces. Yeah. Do you also experience a massive drop in temperature here? Well, we had a we had a a brief drop in temperature while I was uh right now it's not. Right now we do not have a right now we are not having a drop, we're having a high. We are having a high. Let me uh, Google temperature over here. Yeah, it's 31 Celsius. It's 31 Celsius right now. It's uh, and it's also oh, we have 46 humidity. I think humidity has fallen. Yeah, I think you, I think the problem is humidity. Honestly, humidity has been falling for a while, but it's set to rain tomorrow. So yeah and there's gonna be a lot of rain next week's gonna be rain rain and drizzle all week so yeah we are we're back at the uh, at the brief temperature high it's cold enough to justify a sweater here no i'm wearing shorts i'm wearing shorts again because my balls be hot my balls be hot and sweaty and i wish there was someone here to lick them anyway uh yeah it's hot right now because there's a because there's a, a brief uh, brief heat wave I guess it it cycles like this it cycles over here quite a lot we get a, we get the heat and then lots of rain I'll be there in fight nice thank you Pantsu I appreciate you we get a, we get a, we get a lot of rain for a long time until it until to the point that it gets swampy <laughs> until if, until the until the hum, until we are basically 90 and we are basically 100% humidity all the time. And then we get some, uh, and then we get some brief heat, where it stops for a while and it goes high until like 30 something. Right now it's 31 degrees Celsius. Wait for you Americans, how much does in Fahrenheit? 87 Celsius, 87 Fahrenheit, I guess. And then the humidity drops for a few days, and then the rain starts again. We are very rainy over here. I love it. I love the rain. I love my place. I just wish it was colder. Oops, sorry. A hiccup. I just wish it was colder more often. Hmm. Now, moving on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just, just more, just more, 
It's just it's just det detailing the amounts of the number of uh, payments and the and the type of taxes that were levied. It is not exactly in, in, we don't need this amount of detail. Knowing the exact name of the taxes, how much, what the kind of taxes were, and what kind of items they were, and in what regions they were applied. These sort of things are not important. So I keep uh, I keep trying to skip these things. The French monarchy certainly did not remain passive in the face of this state of affairs, but it's difficult to see what it undertook in general to combat it. Yeah, because the French monarchy itself was part of the problem. It's clear enough, however, that it achieved nothing. <laughs> ah, these quotes are so funny. The 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 author is so is so brutal. Like so many times he's saying like, yeah, things were bad. The, the French, they tried to do something and they achieved nothing or barely anything. He's so direct and, and ruthless. It is clear enough, however, that it achieved nothing. The decrees in this connection, which were discussing the previous mention of statues, blah, 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 However, some difficulty in the departing term. Otherwise, there was an attempt to transfer the levying of all these duties to the frontiers of the kingdom. Oh. The only exception that commodities conveyed from the northern provinces to the south were to pay their duties before leaving the former. On the other hand, it must be admitted that the statutes of Henry II did not express, expressly abolish the payment of toll between the two groups of provinces, though that appears to have been their intention. The clear chance that it did affect was to apply these same tones. Blah 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 blah. If the first named radical change, the disappearance of interprovincial tones, was intended, it becomes obvious that not even a fraction of the change was actually achieved. It is possible, on the other hand, that the other result, the extensions of the tones to the provinces outside, the singular firms was affected to some extent, and its possibility was reinforced by the fact that the tall old export tolls had been had always been levied on the large portion of the southern boundaries of the kingdom too, although there was not laid down at their introduction. But then they were paid at least twice. Uh, France of the ancient regime is always divided up into three territories for purposes of toll, not only in the in literature on this subject, but also in the later statutes. Okay, so yeah, they were trying to unify the country, but they couldn't because nobody was cooperating. And not interesting, there's no interest. Not interested, is this a quote? How long is the account? Hmm. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just explaining the what what's what's levied, where the taxes are going, where the taxes should be, in which regions the shops should be go, should be imposed. Hmm. Yes, talking about those, not interesting. Politics about the tolls itself, not exactly interesting. Wait, what? Mm -hmm. Wait. Some commodities were compelled to follow definitely prescribed routes, varying for every category of goods, and this condition applied, be it noted, not only to goods engaged in foreign trade, but also following the usual customs of the system. The goods for trade between the various provinces, namely those coming from Languedoc, Provence, and Dauphiné, with the exception of the trade which these three provinces themselves control. Repeated attempts were naturally made to avoid this compulsion, as a result, a cordon of 167 toll stations was eventually required to keep traffic along the prescribed routes. They tried to keep the, the traffic on routes? Wait, 
The Rose would intend to guarantee Leon's an unchallenged position within his own territory for still gold and silverware. They character raw materials as well as for finished products. They developed a kind of general compulsory staple. Uh, since all commodities were compelled to follow definitely prescribed routes. That no, that's kinda insane. You're asking in medieval times that the all root all goods follow a specific route. A specific I assume specific land route? That's that's even if it was just a specific river route, that's still pretty crazy. Because if you look at if you look at the map of routes of uh let me see. Can I get a year? Can I get a year so I can look at the map? Year, 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 year. What's this year from? 1600s. Map of France. Look at this! All these things are they either rivers or they are roads. And you want the route of goods in a in a region to just follow through one single city, to one single route, Lyons, France. What the need you? Where is Lyons? Lyons, Lyons over here. Okay, all this region, all this region, the goods have to pass through a through a pretty fine route. I think I assume the route has to go through Leon's self. See was small. Can I get a bigger map? What about this map. Yeah, yeah, cookies. Come on, load, please. Feels well. Oh, there you go. Leon's is gonna be... Leon's is gonna be... Oh, I think he is around here. Maybe here. You can see this. that lake over here the ones could be over here but you look at the amount of little lines over here it's fucking insane the number of lines and these are the known ones these are the known ones there's even more little lines and roads to take and they want to divert all of the yeah i think it's over here leo i think it's exactly over here can I zoom in? Leons. And these are all towns, they're all interconnected with each other. Then you can even make your own routes if you don't want. And they want to divert the route of a region through one single city. By 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 increasing they do this by increasing the number of tolls. By tolling everywhere else. I think that's what they're doing. So much insanity. Leonese in particular occupied a special in the tall scenes, so we may almost well say that every tall group in the system had a special position. Onto the fact that the city of Leon's had compounded for its tolls, although on the other hand, this arrangement was not altogether the expected respected. Consequent confusion exceeded the event that which was people defied as current in Languedoc. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. Might expect that the effort of the French monarchy to unify the frontiers, though, within their turn, won't unite more or less than the achievements of Colbert. Huh. <coughs> Colbert. They keep. They keep mentioning this dude. It seems he made his life mission to defeat the Tolls. 
What a noble, what a noble work, what a noble, what a noble person, what a noble mission. Defeat the tall system. Mm -hmm. Ah, it starts with to create order in the tall system within the synchronous fans. That was what he intended and what he largely succeeded in doing by means of the 66 for tariff. The expert duties were consolidated into one, and so were the import duties. But the drafting of the schemes left a great deal to be desired in both respects. A long list of charges were declared abolished, and new uniform rates took their place and were immediately published. Education, which was carried out in Anju, the province was most needed of it was particularly great and the fact that differentiation of tall charges, one of the results of every sex and successful efforts disappeared, was also an important step towards unification. Wait, but how did he do that? How did he exactly did he do that? How did he, he abol how did he yeah I'm just gonna abolish this. Ta-da! It's abolished. How did he do that in practice? That's the one thing that I wanna know about. How did people do in practice this management system? Because it feels so easy. Why did they not? Why did nobody succeed before then? If it was so easy, why did this dude in specific manage to do what they have been trying to do for hundreds of years? Hmm. Just uh, deta detailing the taxes, the changes, but not how did he actually implement them? How did how did he make? How did he force people to actually obey his changes? Because that's also another question. The provinces were deliberately not obeying the laws. The provinces were de deliberately acting independently, setting up their own tolls and taxes. So how did he make it the other people? Well, how did it Hubbard do after a 60 secret for in the province outside of the Singras firm? Very little directly, which again proves that he never intended a general unification. Huh. He stated that this province could always would always have to be considered a foreign country in question of Taos. And that its trade would thereby derive great benefit. Hmm. But why? One respect, however, did do something will lead to some unification outside. Singles fans, although from another point of view, it increased the confusion. Like its successors, the new tariff was made of valid along all the frontiers of the kingdom, with the accession of the province. Its forward uniform duties were spoken of in contrast to the other known uniform duties. The 1667 tariff did not annul that of the 6064, but supplemented it. And as already has been said, the statute of 1687, which survived to the end of the ancient regime, laid special emphasis on the old distinction between the singles friends and the remainder friends. Mm. You know, I'm thinking uh, this is giving me an idea of uh, something to add to this story. To one of my stories. Let me actually take a note of that. Let me grab the file of my writing story. Download it. Yeah, I put a, I keep my file on the on the, on Google Drive, and I backed it up. And there's always like on my computer, and my laptop, so I never lose it. I can access it anywhere as long as I have internet to connect to Google Drive. Anyway, this is giving me an idea of something to add, and this is a good thing. This is exactly the point of this of this stream to give me ideas of things to add to the story. And I just got one, so I need to, I need to make note of this before I forget. Hmm.
where do I add this? Because there's like a, a new arc that I'm writing. So I'm making my notes of uh, of the major events and I need to add a new event to the middle of it. But where do I exactly add it? Okay. This... Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, this one is interesting. Okay, this is a good This is a good idea. I'm happy with this one. There we go. Nice. A nice little addiction. A nice little addiction. Okay, now I'm just gonna save this file again. And continue reading. Yeah, the, these tariffs being disrupted to trade, it gave me an idea. People, the, the reform is constantly trying to unify the taxes and things like that. It gave me an idea of something that I something related to that that I could add to the story. Such results as Colbert did attain were further undermined by that. Inveterate? What the fuck is this word? I've never seen this word before. Inveterate. Inveterate? Formed in a habit. Probably established by long persistence. Jesus. Inveterate cancer of all customs administrations of early times. <laughs> the disobedience and dishonesty of the physicians. Oh. Dishon yeah. yeah. Even though he, he, he even though this covert dude made a lot of good changes. He was still undermined by the good old Dizobian, disobedience uh, corruption. In other words, corruption. Can I copy this? Just hit a nice size though, so it's more obvious. In four years after Colbert's death in 1687, the Intendant at Lyons reported to the Minister of Finance at the time that the officials there extorted payments which they <laughs> had themselves introduced. More exhaustive indictment which clearly shows up the fate of Colbert's achievements to be found in the property of this Bajou du Halle. Deputy Fernandez to the Board of Trade in the year 71. He reads, one second. These offices are usually filled with covetos officials. They always have means in readiness for humbling the merchants. They distrain on their goods, delay their shipments, and cause them a thousand and one difficulties in order to obtain an indemnity. An indemnity is like a payment or a bribe. They wax rich in very few years at the expense of the king and of commerce. Complaints against the obstacles which are placed in one's way have to be made before special judges, whose interests are bound up with the payments which they receive. 
honest merchants who are sensible enough to avoid ignoble ways seldom cover their costs. Because the toll employs themselves, together with those people whom they have under their control, arrange agreements and buy and sell the goods cheaper. These people are delighted when new tolls are set up, for the profits grow accordingly. Only the smaller portion goes to tax farmers. With regards to the multiplicity of charges, it is known, e.g., among other things, that although a large number was repealed by 6064 tariff and united into one important export charge, yet in the very next year, during the time of Martinus farming, the general farmers had higher tolls levied at the Ingrande and on the lower under the name of Consides Parisis, similar to the ones which were repealed by the edict. These tolls have remained in existence since. They are so contentious and intricate that no merchant has ever completely grasped them, but have always freely paid them in order to avoid lawsuits. The tolls from Nantes to Orleans have been so extended that though according to the intentions of the tariff, only 5% should have been levied as import duty. It happens that the charges on goods traveling from Nantes to Orleans run up to almost 15% of the value, similarly in the other cases. Yep, even after even after yeah, even after he unified even after he improved the law, it's still fucked up. He still did not fix the corruption. That's the that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing that was asking. How did he, how did he make people how did he force people to obey the new laws? The answer is he didn't. They just continued doing whatever the fuck they wanted. They just continue doing whatever the fuck they want to. Forms after Colbert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not interesting. Not interesting. Wait, what's this? Just a number of dolls. <laughs> Comparisons with Germany. Okay, now this one is was slightly interesting. This one I had marked as slightly interesting. The description of the French thought disintegration and its outcome can give some idea of how far the development in Germany was due to the narrow policy of the smaller states. And how far to general importance in the face of the feudal system, which was inherited from the Middle Ages and take over in a more or less Improved form adds in two minutes. French development shows that this inheritance, even when its influence was not felt directly, had at least a strong and indirect effect. It led to the imitation and thereby to the diffusion of revival of medieval phenomena of disintegration, which in themselves might not have been difficult to eradicate, but the lack of any creative imagination resulted in the old remedies being used, although they were obviously futile. So far, French had all these points in common with Germany. And to this extent, we may safely say that such a development was independent of the existence of petty principalities. Uh, on the other hand, however, France was successful, successful in freeing herself, at last to some extent, from the feudal toll system. Colbert's tariff on 6064, in spite of all its shortcomings, really was a great reform. And before the French Revolution, there was, with the possible exception of the Austrian tariff of 7075, more than a century later than Colbert, nothing comparable to it in any German state. In addition, France was able to prepare the plans for a new order of things, even though the old monarchy was too weak to carry them into effect. It was thus possible to carry out without friction the final work of reform. One year and a half after the convening of the National Assembly, it was the fertile influence of this change which eventually turned the thoughts of German trade statesmen amongst, along similar channels. Unification in Germany was thus a direct result of that in France. And we can, in this manner, 
measure approximately the effects of this moral state policy. Okay, the struggles against local disintegration in other spheres. In other spheres, introduction. Finally, a new topic. To convey an impression of the extent to which the history of the tall system can be used as a general illustration of mercantilist policy directed against feudal disintegration, the description outlined in the previous chapter must be extended to include the development of internal economic administration in other spheres. But it's quite sufficient to confine such a description to the principal points. The following chapter will therefore limit itself to a cursory survey. The demand for unification in almost every branch of the administration quite naturally found its most powerful expression in France, because political conditions there would seem to be favorable, although the goal lay on the far horizon. In this connection, three statements, each separated from the other by the well over a hundred years, may aptly be quoted as introduction to the description. They indicate how far people at the time were from attaining of what is now considered a matter of course. The demand for unified legislation and a common legal code came strongly to the fore at the assembly of the French General Estate, 5060. A representative of the clergy stated, We want one religion, one law, and one king. Hmm. This is an interesting quote. This is a this is a short but uh, interesting quote. One religion, one law, and one king. All over the continent, the demand for unification was particularly strong in the sphere of law and led to the acceptance of Roman law in those countries which had not developed a uniform code upon a national basis. As England had done, Colbert King, as stated in a memorandum to Louis XIV, was even more striking and as a full importance as, his, as most his, of his statements. And we have another ad break. Another ad break. What am I going to do on this ad break? I'm just going to stretch a little. I need to stretch. See you guys in three minutes.
All right. Last hour. I'm going to end precisely at three hours. Stream. Not sure if I'm going to raid or stick or just end it there. Because I have business after. Nice, good business. Rest and fun. And I don't want to waste a single moment more than I need. Oh, bots. Bots on Twitter. Of course. Of course, that should be a bot. This is no level. Now, where were we? Louis 14. In 6065, he spoke of a great project to bring the whole of his majesty's kingdom within the same statutes and within the same system of weights and measures, an undertaking very worthy of a great king. But he continued, It must be admitted that whatever his, ha his majesty has done so far is nothing in comparison with his work. His majesty would derive satisfaction from achieving that which hardly any prince before him has even attempted. Although the exact exaggeration of Corti is obvious here, yet it shows what a gigantic task people thought the time found to be in front of them, before it was possible to create what in our eyes would be an obvious state of affairs. Yeah, we think that uh, we think the standardization of taxes and things like that is, is, is normal, but no. No. Oh no. Oh no, you have no idea how bad it can get. Oh, actually, it's a thing as the is a good quote you have. The defects of the ancient regime were finally exposed in Cahiers, with the generosity of 7089. The same idea recurs continually. The various parts of the same state appear to be in an eternal state of war with one another, rather than under the guidance of one of the same, of one and the same king and one and the same law, since. France has one king, it seems but narrative that she should have one law, and so on. Germany had more than one sovereign, and so the same argument could not be put forward there. Hm. This is also another funny quote. Oh yeah, I forgot to highlight it. Did I highlight the other one? No, I didn't highlight the other one. Wait, did I highlight? What was the last one that I highlighted? Oh god. There we Oh, okay, I did. That was one I did highlight. King, okay. Your spirits. The same law. There we go. Weights and measures. This is also something I uh I, I briefly went through on one of my writings. Weights and measures. I studied this a little bit. I do I did have a little bit of historical knowledge of this because it was part of my Part of my uh, university degree in robotics, we study weights and measures and its importance historically. Because uh, before the, well, everyone knows weights and measures uh, is a lot more. Is a lot more. Is a lot more. The problems of weights and measures is a lot more relatable to the average person than something about taxes and uh, import and export of goods. Because everyone knows how annoying the imperial system is. How nonsensical it is compared to the to the to the standardized metric system, but it's not. But at the time, at the time, the imperial system did make a lot of sense because it was a lot more relatable, a lot more easy for the for the for the a lot easier for the average person to actually use it and measure it, even though it was full of weird legal inconsistencies. But they're just, they're just par for the time. They did not have the technology to have a precise system. So the imperial system was the was the best thing to come up with. And it somewhat worked. But it was only until like recently more modern times that we had the technology to 
implement the metric system and actually keep it uh, and actually keep it consistent across countries or areas in general the organizing now moving on the organizing with some measures particular characteristics fears to get by who's messaging me okay no thanks oh my god one down stop it fucking bank enemy fucking bank apps enemy ads all things that i do not give a single shit about yeah the organizing of weights and measures is a particularly characteristic sphere as suggested by Colbert in the above quotation the confusion theory was perfectly natural so far as the system of weights and measures demanded a mind capable of exact quantitative measurement and nothing was more alien to people in the middle ages oh okay this is an awesome, another another nice quote yeah how did it for, for the people of medieval times they did not have the technology nor the education to think about a standardized system because that's complicated a standardized system of measurements hmm The parallel we may quote to the fact that even late in the 17th century no two example of the dry measure but so in poetiers were to be found of the same size a more fundamental difficulty however laying the fact that a workable system of this sort stipulates a regular mathematical train of mind without which every weight and every measure becomes an isolated instant unconnected with weights and measures for other purposes yeah, I can, I can see. Yeah, they, they just did not have the technology. They had the, they had the desire, but not the technology and the educational system to implement something like this. To implement a, a better system. This is why education is important. Well, one of the reasons why education is important. Mm-hmm. They all built up their own weights and measure for these goods. Sometimes they were accepted over a larger area. Sometimes they remained confined as a peculiarity of the place where they arose. Within a somewhat parallel course of events took place. Distinction was made there between the unit of weight for copper and iron in the so-called staple cities along the coasts on the one hand and the unit employed in the cities farther inland as well as in the mining districts on the other. The latter had a 10% advantage over the former one count on the heavy transportation costs from the mining districts and inland cities so that they may be thereby better placed from the point of view of freight and cost it was thus considered preferable to alter the unit of weight itself mm. rather than have a common unit and add to the price for transport costs from the pit or the works to the coast so they prefer so they prefer to have local units of measurements instead of a, a generalized measure because it was more advantageous for each location to have their own measurement rather than try to work with a universal one which makes things more complicated for the for the merchant but fuck the merchants <laughs> fuck the merchants it seems to be the team there are also very powerful private instruments to support this integration Oh yeah, this one is like interesting. There was there were private interests supporting the confusion in the mass of the system. Those who had customary claims on delivery of goods had everything to gain by increasing the unit of measurement or weight. While those under obligation to them had correspondingly in contrary interests. Oh yeah, because the unit of is not stable, because the unit's not stable, you gain more if you, if the if you if you can put more if you if you if, you, if if you can put more goods so if the unit considers something small the unit general considers something the unit shrinks which means the same amount of weight ends up with more number of goods then they gain more then gain more while the people who are buying they don't want to they don't want to they, want, they don't want more granularity they want less 
So it becomes easier and they technically start to pay less for the same amount of weight. So it is a it is a game of back and forth. It is a game of back and forth. Because in the absence of uniform administration, the party would greet the political and social power could assert its will. And that party usually collected, consisted of the feudal lord. So there was the tenants for the unit of measure, continuing to increase in size. And as a result, the measure for the green claim by the feudal lords gradually grew to perhaps double the size of the usual green measure. A French statement of 1557 mentions that the tax collectors and stewards of the royal domains, as well as those of every vassal, like the payments in kind, amounting to much more than what they were entitled to. A day afterwards kept their accounts according to a smaller measure, and so the residue for their own benefit. Translator 666. That then an intendant informed Colbert. An intendant informed Colbert that the landowners in his province consciously and deliberately confused the system of weights and measures to their own advantage. Yep, that's expected. In every in every system, in every part you can imagine. There is going to be exploitation, there is going to be corruption. So if you think that today is corrupt, then you imagine how how back then it was. Also known that in the 16th century, Gustavus Vaza, the founder of modern Sweden, himself instru instructed his bailiffs to manipulate measures for his own ends. Yep, and as always, the the royalty was supposed to be the royalty who's supposed to be working on uh, on fixing things is also making them worse themselves because it fits them. They can control things so they can fix when it benefits them and they can break it when it benefits them. Hmm. The lack of agreement was so great that even prominent historians of the Middle Ages have assumed that weights and measures from the very beginning, we're under the regulation of the village laws and not under those of the king. <laughs> a very up point, to say the least. But it does show how difficult it is to find any other exemplary explanation for the disruption, even within a politically homogeneous territory. In actual fact, however, the system of weights and measures probably never was an outcome of legal ordinance. Yet it was, can only be explained by a bias from which institutional historians can never entirely free themselves. To an extent, one may say that contracts were based on certain special measures. Better known and better kept than the rest. And for those reasons, we call that sort of measure a standard means of measurement, analogous to a standard coinage. In other cases, the customary measures, measures were then converted into the standard measure. But it was probably much more difficult and impractical than with coinage, whose content could be more easily verified. Yeah, this, this reminds me that, this gives me the idea that I, institu I instituted a um, weight and measurement system in my story. Like they, they put an effort into standardizing things, into creating proper metrology, just so they could, uh, just so they could create gears and precise mechanisms. They instituted a, a system of measurements that's super precise, just so they could get uh, machinery. For weapons, actually, for weapons, for weapons and tanks and cars and airplanes and guns, you need very precise pieces, metal pieces for that. So you need the precise system of measurement. So they develop a whole system of measurement just so you could make things like that. But if the system of measurement starts to spread, it'll also help the the economy. It can also help the economy and merchants. Honestly, this is a good thing. It's another another thing. Let me add this actually. Let me add this as a as a, as another thing on the story, because with a with a standardized measurement system, the the people receiving the goods cannot cheat anymore. But the merchants, so this benefits the merchants more than it benefits the people who buy from the merchants. The merchants who do the transportation. Let's see. Impre- How the fuck? Impre- Sign. 
There we go. Jesus Christ, I forgot how to read that word for a second. And this is how you this is how you slowly build a complex system. You need a, a hundred little ideas. So every time I get an idea, I make sure. Every time I get an idea, I make sure that I write it down somewhere. So that when I'm looking back at my notes, I have I have a complete a complete and extremely detailed map of everything that should happen. This is how you build a complex and a realistic plot. Because in real life, in real life, everything is way everything has incredible amount of granularity. Something is happening because something else happened with someone else with a with a bunch of people happening and it ended up because uh because of the individual conditions of those people who are influenced by the people around them and so on and so forth so every person influenced the other so every happening every major event that happens like a revolution is just a sequence of incredibly little incredibly little small events and you see this a lot in uh, in uh, light novels or or some uh, or some more 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 I won't I don't exactly say badly written but some more lighter types of novels and writing where the author clearly has an idea a general idea like I'm gonna make this novel about a revolution so there's all those uh, so he makes all that explanation about the revolution but it's all just very very general very abstract very superficial. Oh, if you look at something like the Tolkien style, Tolkien makes a painful, an extremely painful and deliberate and slow way of describing things by mentioning names. He mentioned specifically this person did this thing, which influenced this person, which influenced this thing, which influenced this person, influenced this thing. So the events that happens in uh, when you read the events happening in Lord of the Rings, they feel real, they feel epic. They feel extremely realistic, like it is actually a living, breathing world, because everything is precisely detailed, to a painful level, to the point that it's actually a bit bad for reading. It's actually bad to read, it's actually difficult to read uh, Lord of the Rings because of how detailed everything is. So it becomes exhaustive. Or it is a masterpiece, but it's also not exactly a perfect, like no, no issues or anything, it doesn't make it worse. It doesn't make it worse. It makes it more special because nobody does something like that. Yeah, I think I think the I think only Game of Thrones and in th those kind of novels. I think or maybe uh, what they call it. I never I've never read it, but the Wheel of Time. They are these are the novels that I have go to a, a painful level of detail. I also go to the painful levels of details, but not exactly about uh, people like that. I I go no no yeah I do I do I do make my characters very 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 particular particular i try not to not to put them into tropes and say yeah this character is uh this character is tsundere and he acts like that tsundere and he's good and he only does stereotypical things that a tsundere does like this character has a has a bit of a tsundere so sometimes i act and i write it acting as a tsundere other times i write it as uh doing the other things like i i speak i pick specific Specific moods for the time. This person is feeling very combative, so this person is gonna act combative. Now, this person is also a bit of a tsundere, so it's gonna. It's, I'm gonna phrase it so it acts kind of tsundere, but the main, but the main, but the main feeling that this person should act is uh, is combative right now. So you need, but for 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 things like that, you need to have a, a very extensive map. Of everything that's going on, that has happened, of details, so you can keep connecting things over and over and again, keeping connecting the dots. So you make a very, so you make a very complex line, a very complex plot line that feels natural, rather than just revolution. So those things happen, and these things in general happen, and that's it. It feels very bland and general and uh, and basic, really. Basic. This is why it's important to, to go into detail like this. And why I'm doing this. Why I'm subjecting myself to this, to this ordeal <laughs> of a stream. Now, moving on, where was I? Hmm...
Oh. To convey an idea of the position in an economically developed country, I shall give an extract from the description of Jack Savary in his famous Handbook for Merchants. Where he has to devote six chapters to an outline of the weights and measures within and outside France. Of course, without being able, however, to describe individual cases or abuses in the following... Oh, come on, who's giving me messages at this time? Another... Oh my god, why are you keeping me fucking sending me out? Where was I? In the following, some part of the legal differences that existed within France is revealed. The measure for the liquids in is known in Paris as Muid, New Orleans, Montargis, and Champagne Q, and Demi Q. In Burgundy, Houlette. In Bracens and Touraine, Poinçon. In Poitou and Anjou, Pipes. In Lyonnais, Asnies. In Bordeaux, Tonio, at the rate of four barriques, equal three murids. All these measures have more or less varying, varying amounts in them, and so have their divisions, which are proportional to quart, quint, and other subdivisions. The dry measure for grain is called Prévoté and Vincomté de Paris, as well as almost everywhere in the kingdom. Boisseau, of which twelve go to make one steppli, and twelve septies, one muid. In particular places, as e.g. in Anjou, the measure is, however, called bonitude, to twenty septies, and in Lyonnais, charged twenty-one bichet. But both boisseau and septi are bigger in one place than in another, according to the docum of the, of the locality. Similarly, within units of long measure, in Avignon, Provence, and Montpellier, one can is equivalent, is equivalent to one and two thirds of a Parisian on. In Toulouse and Languedoc, to one and a half dito. In Toys, Arc, and Bohos, and several other unnamed cities in Picardy and Burgundy, two thirds. In Lyon, 99 hundreds. In Saint Genoux, one on and eight lines. We see them that the can could be twice as long in one part of France as in another. Just, it's just random names with random sizes attached to them. It, it, there's no sense, there's no logic, there's no rhythm or rhyme for these sort of fucking things. Okay, this is enough. The state of affairs was by no means the outcome of the indifference of, of, the, indifference of the state towards unification. On the contrary, it happens that in the matter of weights and measures, there are older and more assiduous attempts to bring about unification than in any other sphere. I can imagine that. I can imagine that, but they literally do not have the technology to make this standardize. It is so difficult. Congress of Papala Gates, as nearly as the year 786, for the uniform weights and measures to be made so as to prevent buying and selling according to varying measures. Yeah, 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 yeah. As usual, England was the pioneer of unification from the end of the 12th century onwards, then in Magna Carta, and especially from the beginning of the 14th century onwards, a veritable host of ordinances was issued. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. interesting wait nevertheless some degree of unification was achieved in England and possibly in the transference of control to paid officials which was made later incurred success but its most important cause was a factor which must never be omitted in describing English development that is the ease of communications which no government however bad was able to obliterate altogether is very significant that Postlet Wade, in his commercial distinct dictionary of 1774, never even mentions the existence of local weights and measures in the country. French reformers, immediately before the French Revolution, also looked up to England as a model on this matter. And so we can definitely say that England was well ahead of the continent. Nevertheless, there was no question of complete uniformity in England. 
Local weights and measures were not abolished until the Statute of 8035. Some of the original local measures at that time received currency for certain goods over the whole country, particularly the Winchester bushel for grain and other goods. You know, thinking of on my, on my own experience, writing about weights and measures, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like an endless loop. Like you want a weight of distance, one meter. How do you measure one meter? Okay, you 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 have to at one point pick up one object and say, yeah, this object means one meter. But it's one meter in the specific temperature, in the specific humidity, in the specific atmospheric pressure, because all these things they influence the, the weight, the length of any material. Metal, wood, organic, time, even time can affect the, 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 the length of this material because some materials just disintegrate with time, like wood. If you're not preserving it perfectly, and if you're and if if you're touching the material repeatedly, it is also going to wear down. So how do you? So how do you actually set up a system like this? You need also something that measures because you need to be able to pick this pick this meter and say that this meter is equal to the same meter. The same meter stick that's like across the country but the, this other place needs to also have the same temperature so you need you need a, a thermometer that's equal in both your place and also that place but even this thermometer is also subject to these uh, to these variances in temperature it's a thermometer that's uh, that has this length where the notches are in these parts when they have like centimeters between each other but now the stick is also varying the stick that you're using to create these these thermometers are also varying based, based on temperature so now you it's, it's like a it's like a problem without beginning or end because now you now now you now you now your thermometer has uh, has an inaccuracy how do you deal with that how do you discover the inaccuracy how do you how do you minimize its inaccuracy? It's not just one thermometer. It's the temperature thermometer. It's the atmospheric pressure thermometer. It's the is the is the it's the humidity thermometer. There's also the material that's used. It has to be the exact same material because metal has purity in it, and if it has different uh, if it has different sorts of purity, or impu if they have different impurities in it. It becomes a completely. It behaves completely different. Like uh, you put carbon inside iron, and it becomes steel. And steel has an extremely different way of uh, behaving than uh, than average iron. So you you also need to make sure that the both measuring sticks have the exact same composition, the same format, and that they also are being used in the same way. Because if people start to touching them, it's gonna it's gonna corrupt. It's gonna it's gonna rot. Uh, it's gonna rust, rust. It's gonna rust the metal with their own finger oils and acidity, and even in the way they used to measure, even the way they used to measure, if they are too rough with the metal, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna grind down. They're gonna have to use that measuring stick to measure hundreds of things every day, and that measuring stick is gonna grind down with time. So you need a measuring stick for a measuring stick because you need to have like a uh, you need to have a, a, a measuring stick that keeps preserved that's that's used as little as possible and then you have a second measuring stick that you use to measure every day and then you regularly use that you use compare that uh, the measuring stick with the with the official measuring stick and even then you need to make sure that official the the the, the principal measuring stick is also time to time measured again to make sure that it's not becoming warped or deformed it is it is a it is a it is a, a system that is like there's you you want you want what do you call it you want predictability you want standardization you want it to be precise but in every step of the way the precision keeps keeps adding on but the level of complexity that you that you can get just to increase the precision of things is absurd, it's insane. 
is actually interesting in a nerd way. The depths of things you need to do for that. The depths you need to do for that, but to write down something like this is not exactly it's actually difficult to make it interesting because it is a lot of a boring details, honestly. To make a to add us to a story in a way that doesn't bore the, the readers is kinda of difficult because I I had a, I had I already had a couple of readers complaining that my story is too engineering focused. My story is becoming too engineering focused <laughs> because I've been adding too many details. It just it's just nice. It just feels good to keep a to make a system that that looks nice, but still, it's good to also it's good to also not uh, overly focus on one thing like I had with weights and system, which is why I'm also looking at the uh, economy with mercantilism. But now I have uh, I've uh, rambled enough about this. I've rambled enough about this and refresh my own memories of things. Now, mm hmm. Uh, nothing else that's interesting. Nothing else that's interesting. Nine rings were gifted to the race of men. Oh, I do point. What the fuck is this word? A void du point. I think I heard it before, but. No, oh, the French word. What? There's no translation? Since corporate cities reckoning Troy wait and all other places in a void of Oh I think it's a, oh I think it's a it's a measure. It's a it's a it's a it's an is a measuring weight. That's <laughs> that's what the, those word means. Okay. Dollar or meter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Nothing interesting. Let me take a look at the. Wait. Let's just end this subsection and then I'll look into the. Just into the. How do you call it? Sumeri. See if there's any other interesting. Otherwise, I'm moving on to the next. Yeah, they just keep adding taxes upon taxes, trying to fix problems that they themselves have broken. Like, where is it? The general outcome, as was very customary under French monarchy, was a new state tax. Let's fix the taxes by adding more taxes. I mean, they eventually fix it, but it's like they keep breaking stuff because they can't help themselves. They try to fix something. They add a new tax that kind of fix it, but then they just go and break it again. Then later on, they fix it again. They just keep uh, fixing it. Just it is two steps forward, one steps back. They are moving forward, but still. I fucking hate oil industry buzzwords. Why are they allowed to make up words different from the similar industry one? Just because oil industry makes me genius. Holy shit, I've never heard of something. Hello, Dios Grande. i never heard of something like this. What the, what buzzwords are they using? I guess they... Yeah, I guess it's not exactly... Well, I guess they kind of get the meaning of what you're saying. Uh, industries, they just... Uh, industries in general, they just... Industries and companies in general, they just like to use buzzwords. They just like to keep... Uh, you keep uh, uncertain and more absurd terms so that things are more a little bit more palatable. It's like a, you, you can kind of see that when they refer to when they refer to global warming in reports and things like that. They do not exactly refer to global warming or the the, the things that are gonna go bad with it. They just um, they just use euphemisms and uh, ways to mask. That they're actually killing people, that they that their people are gonna die and things like that. There's going to be problem, quote unquote problems, casualties. They're gonna be they're, instead of saying war, they're gonna be there's gonna be disputes over water, things like that. So it's not exactly I I can't I won't say from my understanding that it'll be exclusive to oil industry. It's just uh it's just a it's just a industry in general. It's just a uh, decadent 
decadent decadent company thing in general and this text brushes but I had a chance to do translations for that stuff and all your industry terms stand out way too much oh bushels what's bushels 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 Okay, yes. Is this an actual word? It's just a unit or something. Okay, weights and measures. Yeah, it is another weight. A large quantity, bushels of money. Yeah, but, but in this, <laughs> but in this concept, it's just that they're just using whatever word they want, just because they can, of uh, of measurements, of units of measurements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, this then was the final achievement after 450 years work. Okay, here there is full of complaints against the chaos in this field as they are against the tosses. Wait. What's this? To this end, the decree confined itself to the mild and non-pretentious task of publishing a table showing the relationship between the different weights and measures in various parts of the country. <laughs> okay, okay. The decree confined itself to the mild and unpretentious task of publishing a table showing the relationship between the different weights and measures in various parts of the country. Thus then was the final achievement after 415 years of work. 415 years trying to fix the weights and measurement system. And what do they have for show? What's the greatest crowning achievement? A table that shows the the relationships between the units <laughs> it feels so ridiculous it feels so ridiculous but it is also a good thing because that's the that's the main issue that's the main issue that the units are random in in arbitrary and in every part of the country there's like one unit for one for whatever for whatever for in one place so having a table is actually helpful but it sounds so silly it sounds so silly I'm actually gonna quote this. Bit insane how new standardization is. Yeah. Let's see. 70, 1766. 1766. Like, le they have been working for, for for 440 years. And it's it is it is in it and it's more time than it has been since that time. Like and just a little bit of math for a second. 1766 2024 they, they have been working for 250 it's been 258 years since they finished a work of 450 years like we've been we've been we've been in modern times less time than it took for them to fix something as simple as the units not even fix not even fix they didn't even fix the units of measurements. They just created a table to show the relationship. 450 years. And it's been less than 300 years since then. It's, it's insane how slow and difficult everything was back then. If only if we had a single weight and a single measure in the whole kingdom. Oh. For what a number of years we have we've longed for this, and how many lawsuits and arguments it would prevent. I just remembered something. I just remembered something. That I kind of forgot for a while. I need to, I need to keep this... I need to keep this note on to talk later. Yeah. Okay. No, I need to write this down somewhere else. I just remember something. And it's very important that I write this down. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> now. Moving on. Were we on the test? Mm 
When we found your carry out in bay than in 8010, earlier than in other places. We got 163 different measures for cereals, 123 different liquid measures, 63 different measures for liquor, and 80 different pound weights. This was certainly a record which was difficult to beat. <laughs> okay, coinage. A higher degree of unification was achieved in the coinage system than that in the weights of measures and as far as I'm able to see, the reason for this lay in the fact that there were certain universal and specific factors easily explained by monetary theory which often cooperated for a unifying effort. Yeah, a unifying coinage system benef benef de definitely benefits everyone. That definitely benefits everyone. Although the same factors under a condition working in exactly the opposite direction. In any case, the success achieving unifying the coinage system was incomparably greater than that in the system of weights and measures. And this whole good not only in England but particularly in France. German system of coinage for trade and commerce, on the other hand, proved even more confused and unobstructive than any of the other factors in German disintegration which have already been considered. Yeah, but you need a, you still need a a, a strong uh, a strong central government. Yeah, German sort of government was not strong. Hmm. The old sound unknown nation is so happy as the one without a history may be aptly applied. We never lost sight of the principle of a unified coinage under the control of the king, and it was carried to completely under Henry II in the second last of the 12th century. The depreciation of the coin had then ceased during the middle of the 16th century, in the reign of Henry VII. Eight. And so England escaped the confusion in her coinage, which almost every other country experienced in theirs. French rulers, on the other hand, evince an outstanding talent for manipulating the coinage to their own profit, and to the loss of almost everyone. <laughs> uh, ev uh, French rulers evince an outstanding talent for manipulating the coinage to their own profit, and to the loss of almost everyone else. It's Always pretty comical. This sort of thing is always pretty comical to me. Oh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes until the end of the stream. I'm gonna be just quickly raiding after stream. I have, have business after, so... 3 hours. Immediately raid. Mm-hmm. Mm, with the king of the empire, is very important. Confusion was storeroom. <laughs> the confusion reigned supreme. The confusion was storeroom. Uh, I think the author liked this. I think the author likes these quotes. I think the author thinks that. I, I, I think the author is saying that things were kind of difficult. That things were a little bit complex at the time. I think that's what the author is trying to say. Mm -hmm. Oh, the miracle thing is that the efforts of unification were actually successful. Oh, a decree of 1262 gave exclusive currency to royal coinage in territories without private coinage rights. I guess even, even coin, they had their own local coin. So even in that front, there was the, the, there was this so-called uh, what, what was what was the word that the author was using feudal feudal dissolution feudal feudal dissolution or, or something like that. Like the unification, the, the local or every every lo, every location has its own microcosm of everything, it's different from from thing. The, the thing about saying a federal government, a national currency, these were foreign, absolutely completely foreign concepts to people at the time. A few years later, the coinage was extended to the whole of the royal domain, the, the air directly under the control of the crown. Okay. Yeah, these sort of things, you don't really see a lot in, in, in common 
in common medieval media. So like, it's a neat little detail to add to your stories. You wanna make a, you wanna make a, you wanna make a, you wanna make your your kingdom look decadent and full of trouble. Just make it, just copy it. Doing do how things were during mechanism. Taxes everywhere. Weights and measures everywhere. Taxes upon taxes. Bribery, corruption. Every step of the way, in every situation, in every and also their own laws. Laws that were so complicated, not even the people were supposed to know about and know them in full. And each region has their own little coin. So every time you go in a new, in, every time if you are a merchant, every time you go into a new region, you have to adapt to a whole new, to a whole new world. It's like going between countries. It's like going between countries, not in, in modern times, but worse. Because you're you're just going to different regions. You're not even you're not even going to an another country. You're just moving between regions within a country, and it's like a completely new universe in each region you go to. Hmm. Uh, Lamas have stood the royal carnage in good stead in its competition with feudal currency. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, they just limited the they just limited the ability of the people to make their own coins. It's just very slow. Very very slow they just little by little they just chip away chip away at this at these issues and eventually they manage to succeed and then the other coinage systems died out eventually how people say that calculations were only necessary to tax people with an exact amount. Whoever taxed at the time could name any number they wanted. At least now it's based on statistic. Though statistics is built to... Yeah, that, that's the exact issue. That's the exact issue. The, the author repeatedly said about. They did just that. The, the officials were corrupt. The, guy, the tax collectors, they were corrupt. Every single one of them, in every step of the way uh, above the ladder, even the king himself did not obey their own laws. Because who could say no? Who could say no? Who was gonna? Who was gonna? There was so much corruption everywhere. To actually stamp it out was a was an herculean task. So the so the so the the the, the collector he would like. Yeah, I need to make a tax on the size of this of the of these goods you have, on the size of the sack of uh, grain you have. So he pack, and so he grabs his little measuring stick, and he can increase or decrease the size of it. And nobody's gonna know, and nobody's gonna know, because how are you gonna measure? How are you going to? How are you going to uh, police that? That is the biggest problem with this area. Corruption! Yay, corruption in every step of the way. Because there's no... Even even if there was... Even when they make... Even when there's like a, a lot of complaints saying... A lot of people complaining that... Yeah, this place is corrupt. Please, policy. Please, policy. So yeah, okay. The king goes like... Gathers a group of people and say like... You guys, you go investigate that. They investigate. And even then... They can they are they're gonna become corrupt themselves. They can be corrupt themselves. The corruption is gonna come back after a while anyway. Or the laws themselves are not enough to stamp out the corruption because the laws are because the laws themselves are complicated and nobody understands them. So like the investigators uh, the investigators just go like am I are you doing investigations are like are you doing something illegal? Is that is that official doing something illegal? And they're like I don't know. The law doesn't explain this correctly. The law doesn't explain correctly. 
His measuring stick is kinda alright. His measuring stick is his measuring sticks. His measuring scales are kinda alright. So how do you actually find out the, the corruption attempt? You can find out like if the guy is asking for, for for bribes and things like that, but there's just so much of it that it's basically impossible to stop. It's basically impossible to stop. Freedom of interpretation, yeah. Freedom of interpretation in everything. <laughs> Freedom of interpretation, because even if the even if the king himself says that uh Things must, uh, because the king himself benefits from, from things being uh, free to interpret. The king himself benefits from that. Because they also abuse those systems. Because the king also abused those systems. Anyway. Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, okay. Enough. Enough. Let's make a last quote. Hmm. <laughs> if anything, conditions were even worse. Oh god. Hmm. Let me just copy this quote and mark that I stopped here. There we go. I'm gonna mark that I stopped here. And that's it for the stream. That's it for the stream. Let's look for someone to raid. Save this. Saving this. Closing up. Now look for someone to raid. It has been a productive. It has been a productive, a productive session. Definitely being a very productive session. So let's see, who do I rate today? Oh, Polly, Polly streaming. Polly is streaming, and he's doing a uh, American against the list. I kind of wanted to raid Albert, but I don't think I've raided uh, Polly in a while, or if I've ever raided them. Good sesh, yep. It was a very good session. It was a very good session. I got some good notes for my for my for my story. Improve my writing skills. Improve the 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 current plot and coming arc of the story. Yeah. Objective of the stream has been achieved. Objective of the stream has been achieved. So let's raid. Let's raid Polly. He's. A, I already played America McGizzly, so. Oh my God. Do I write? Only. Oh. Only. There we go. Now, that's pretty much it for today. Tomorrow I'll be doing a AR stream. Gonna be starting a midday Eastern US UTC minus five. Today I started one hour early because I had business. So tomorrow I'm gonna start one hour later than what I start today, and it's gonna be a four hour stream. And hopefully I'll finish uh, on a free as art. It's been so long I've been doing that. Then Saturday I have TTRPG session with uh, with some cool dudes. Gonna be playing Aliens TTRPG called Mothership. And Sunday no lapis stream unfortunately, but I'll be playing against the Storm, which is a comfy game. So that's it for the week. Now take care of you hyphos. Take care of you husbandos. I'll see you all next time. Here's your raid message. Bye bye. See you next time.